Hey man, if you clicked on this hoping to learn a couple new things about bass fishing, all I can tell you is you came to the right spot. My name is Bradley Holman. I am not a professional YouTuber. I don't know how long I'm gonna be making these videos, but I have caught a couple of bass. If this is your first time here, go down below, give me a click, love the subscribes. Lots of feedback guys, love it, always get it. Um, this is gonna be part two. Last episode was part one of how to catch bass on a river. Um, really no explanation needed here if you've seen the first one you know what this one's about we're going to use google earth mapping how you can do all this from home break down the water get down to 10 percent of the water before you ever get to the lake just trying to help you speed up the process is really what this is going to do um, this is only in the spawn this can work on any river system in the united states it's not just weiss lake or the coosa river this thing works these are patterns that work throughout the country on any type of river system during the spawn that's what we're looking for so i'm not going to sit here and talk forever i'm going to get right to it Lake Wise, east part, north end, upper end of the river, my favorite part, let's get it on. Really looking forward to this. I've had lots of compliment or comments and stuff that have come back. Um, one of the ones, uh, comments that came back, a guy actually pointed out something that I had missed. And uh, I don't even know that it, I, I knew that it worked like this, but I can give you some background. So we're west of the, we're east of the bridge here. That's what we're, this one's all gonna be on the east side of uh, Lake Wise, actually going on up into the river, okay? And uh, guys, if you're not familiar, this is navionics.com. Uh, go to navionics.com, click on the chart viewer, and you can go anywhere in the country you want to go. Um, at the bottom left corner of this uh, page, um, this little navionics sign or sonar looking sign. So like here, see how we don't have any lines or anything drawn in? You can click here, and it's clicked on navionics. You can click on sonar chart and see how it gave us some lines in here. So this can be one of two things. What this is, is they have two options of charts. If you look up here, Navionics is now a Garmin brand. Garmin acquired Navionics. And before Garmin had acquired Navionics and were building units, and I know this because I'm related with uh, Garmin, um, they were doing all their own charting. Um, they had a chart team. They had guys going out in boats um, on many of the lakes, and they started on the big popular lakes first and uh and they were charting all the lakes and making their own charts and so that's what happened there um and so some of the lakes they had charts on some of the lakes they didn't they had nav you know once they acquired navionics they could they could combine the two um, this could even be some of the sonar charting that is turned in by our community off of our boats because a lot of the graphs that garmin produces today will actually create their own uh mapping like this so um just an fyi if you get into an area that um, you're interested in looking at using avionics and it looks like this on the website um, try clicking this and you may get a little more detail um, channel swing bend up against these docks things like that that could be important to to catch the fish so this is about the spawn in the spring for bass fishing is what we're going to cover here in this episode so let's get to it we've got a lot to cover here um, this section of the lake is still what i would consider a mid-lake section but what I am going to warn some of you guys about, if you if you go to Weiss Lake and you're not familiar with it, the further we get up this thing, the more treacherous, and not really treacherous, but the more you need to pay attention to where you're running, how you're running, and how you're getting there, because sandbars and, and things like that are going to become a bigger issue than they, than they did at the bottom end of the pool. This is common in any river system, too. So anything that we go over here, you can use in any river system. These, these are just general rules of thumbs, okay? So um, let's start here at Lake Wise. So this section, one of the things that we're looking for in the spawn is to get out of the current. The fact that this flows through, even though the main river channel is here, you're still going to have some current. Current is still flowing from behind this island. These back in here being dead-end areas, dead-end areas. Um, these are more what I'm looking for. Um, they look extremely flat in this picture. We'll look at them in Google Earth. Um, I like flat areas. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for big giant flats, actually. Um, that's a very attractive area to me. Um, and then there's some stuff here for those fish to live offshore during the summer as well. Um, down here at this bottom end, you can kind of see our channels here. We got quite a bit of creek channel. And I'll go back over this, guys. The reason that I go over the creek channels over and over is this is the highway that the fish use. It's, it's their interstate. And so there's more traffic right here than there is here, you know, and it just, it's just the way that they travel. Um, there's more traffic up against this island on this side than there is on these points of these islands. 
Um, moving on up the lake, we're going to follow this river channel coming on up. Main river channel runs the mouths of these coves. This is an important thing to, to pay attention to also because the highway is close. It's not on the other side of the lake from them. It's on this side, and these are all north coves, you know, facing the south. They're going to get a lot of sun. They're going to warm a little faster. Um, here is a huge backwater, and this dude is going to dead end back here, it looks like. This is a big thing on a river system. There shouldn't be any current here at this point. This should be one of the last places to muddy, uh, depending on what this does feeding it. We'll look at all this on Google Earth, but this is a, this is a high potential area. We want to look at this. Um, really excited about looking at this end of Weiss because this is truly river fishing once you get to this point. You can see how the sandbars start and then you've got the river channel through the sandbars and then you end up with these oxbows. This is, that's what this is. This is an actual oxbow left over from the river before the river was ever dammed up. Um, these are very common on every river system, uh, whether it's a Red River in Louisiana or the Arkansas River through Oklahoma and Arkansas. Um, River oxbows are, are a very common common theme on river systems. The Mississippi River, they all have them. <clears throat> so, another backwater, another backwater. The thing that you're going to start noticing is, is that the uh, Navionics uh, page is not going to do a whole lot for you um, once we start looking at backwaters. These are huge backwaters, guys. Huge, massive. And the fact that they're so big tells me that they have the potential to hold uh, a large population of fish. These these are things that I really, really like in a river system. Um, you want to see as many of these big giant oxbows as you can see um, with the potential for them to hold bass uh, is much greater the larger that they are. This even appears coming up here. We looked at this oxbow and I said that was high potential. This is also high potential. Another dead end. We need to look at this. I mean, if there's culverts and things that come through these and create creek channels, they, yes, they can give them some flow, um, but dead end stuff like this, and when I'm talking about that, I'm talking about right there. Um, these are the places that, that we look for in river systems during the spawn. So uh, lots of backwaters. They're easy to see on this Navionics, even though you can't see the, uh, the lines in them, um, the fact that they don't have depth lines in them, uh, contour lines doesn't really matter to me because when we go to Google Earth, you'll see what I'm talking about. These become much diff more difficult to see, whereas they stand out very plain on this brown matte blue water. And, and then there's liable to be some that aren't even marked on here. But uh, the biggest ones are the ones that I'm going to be most concerned with up front uh, for a big national tournament coming because I'm looking for a larger population of fish. Um, if you're a local and you live there, then you can get off in every little crook and cranny and find the three-day time period per se that this little thing right here goes off you know i don't know but th those are the things that you know one day tournaments that you sell a lot of you guys are, are interested in and fish but a lot of times they are one in little bitty places like that um you go in and catch a big sack out of a little bitty spot and uh, and then it's over but you only need it for one day so it's perfect um it's got lots of feeder creeks up here the further up we get and now we've probably stepped over into georgia Let's look let's back out here and see. Yep, we're in Georgia. So here's the state line of Alabama and Georgia. And, and really, guys, around this state line is what I saw where I really liked a lot of stuff. Um, a lot of these feeder creeks and stuff are also going to be able to have a, a population of fish in them that you could catch a, a big bag, you know, one time out of. Um, so let's, uh, let's go back and let's look at what we have as far as the... Google Earth because it's going to be the it's going to be the the best one to look at the upper end of this because of the fact that we don't have contours and stuff in this map so um, in a lot of places um, we've got some ideas of where all we want to look uh, this midsection still guys has lots of places the back end of this um, there's going to be lots and lots here to look at so let's uh let's do that okay guys here we go Google Earth springtime spawn um, I don't know if I covered this on the last one, but as farther we get up this river, guys, the more silted it's going to become. So the more caution you need to use running around, um, it, it does become you need to idle if you don't know, uh, unless there's buoy channels marking. You, you want to be more cautious. Um, the further we get up a river system, the more cantankerous they become. And, and uh, common with all of them, the bottom of them are usually pretty safe, and then the tops of them are, uh, you got to watch what you're doing. 
So let's start. Last one we did on this side of the bridge. We're coming down here. I'm going to look at a couple of these backwaters. I notice we're still kind of in the mid lake section. That's what I would call it. And, uh, you know, it, it kind of looks like it's mid lake, you know. Um, it's not just completely river run yet with uh, oxbows and things. Really, right now it's kind of feeder creeks and stuff like that. It's kind of what our backwaters are, which is what this is. Um, any of these bigger backwaters like this, um, going to have a big population of fish in them um, stack up in the back. The, uh, the thing that I came in here to do was the oxbows. That's what I'm so excited about doing this end of the, of the river system. Um, this is a good looking backwater here, um, no doubt. Uh, this is a very good looking area. So I'm just going to try to highlight the two or three places that I would really spend a lot of my time focusing where I think, um, you know, top tens and tournaments would come from. Um, this this right here is an oxbow. This is from when the river, before the river, the dam was ever built, and it actually created an oxbow. Um, these are really popular places. Um, they usually hold fish. They usually hold big groups of fish. You've got a riprap wall here. You probably have a tin horn or two underneath the water, but, but other than that, you've got a dead end stop with rock and no silt. Um, great place. Uh, it's got a couple little feeder creeks with some bridges, riprap, and some little pockets. This is going to be one of my areas probably. Coming on down, does the same thing here. Dead ends. Got a tin horn here, but we still got rock uh, going across this road bed. So this is going to be my number. We're going to label this one number one, and I'm going to include this with it, the back of this. But I'm definitely going to spend some time looking at all this. Um, and like I say, you know, I mean, if I come in here and I can't get bit on the back of this, and I don't get bit on the bridge here, or the yeah, the little bridge and riprap here, and then I come to the back of this and I don't find any fish, then I'm not going to stop and fish every little nook and cranny of this place. Um, because I've hit the high percentage areas in this area and didn't get bit, so I'm not going to hit the smaller ones. Whereas if I do get bit, then I'm going to start picking apart little places like this. This is a very cool place. Um, these are road beds, old road beds. And this one actually is a great looking spawning area. Get on the back side of this and be able to catch spawners on this off this road bed itself. It's a really good looking little area right there that's kind of hidden <clears throat> on the back side of the river channel. Um, these areas up here are really good looking areas. If the fishing is extremely tough, I think these are areas that you catch fish out of. Um, I think it's hard to catch a giant bag out of these areas um, just because the fish get kind of spread out. You know, this, this looks like a Midland style type of lake right here. Got lots of docks, lots and lots of fish. Now I'm just talking about the spawn. There's a lot of fish in this area. There's no doubt. Um, it's a good place to go in and catch fish. I shouldn't have said what I said because it's it's a good looking area, but it's not going to be one of my top two or three on a river system. That's what I'm looking for. Um, they definitely win tournaments out of here. There's, there's too many docks and too much cover and you got lots of depth here. So these fish can live here year round. Year round, they can live here. Um, as we get on up this pool, we're going to have smaller areas and it's going to concentrate those fish. Even though there may be fewer fish, it's going to concentrate them into smaller areas. And that's really what I'm looking for. So that area there was number one. Here is another really good looking backwater. Let's see how we get into this thing. We've got docks and stuff in it, so there's got to be a way in and out. There's a bridge. Looks like right there is your entrance. This is a giant backwater lake as well. Big circle pond. Dead ends back here. I'm going to look back here for sure. Um, you've got these feeders coming in here. I'm going to look around the mouths of these feeders. Definitely. Um, road bed. Uh, tracking fish up. Uh, back side of the riprap or either side of the riprap. This side's your sunny side. Probably facing more to the south than this one is. Um, I like that south, southern sun. Uh, feeder creek in the back of this, feeder creek in the back of this, and a feeder creek here. So there's this is this is going to be number two. High potential, and it's and I understand it's a huge area, but when you start looking at the backs of things and the sides of things, it, it gets smaller pretty quick. <clears throat> Let's move on up the river, across the river here. This is another really good looking area, big. 
It's got depth to hold fish all year long. The back of this, obviously the backs of these. A really good looking area. And even a little short stop off spot there. I like that too. That's a good looking little spawning area as well. I mean, you can get a lot of fish come right in off the river and, and pile right there and not go all the way to the back of that thing. I imagine a lot of the fish that you catch back here could be resident fish. Uh, that, that, that stay in there all year long. I'm going to label this one number three. Uh, this is another good looking one. It's got lots of fingers. This one does not look as attractive as the last three we just looked at. There's just, it doesn't have the feeder creeks for one, right? We've just got one feeder on it. Um, but it is a nice stable backwater. Uh, so it, 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 it definitely has some potential. I do not like it as much as the other three. Feeder creeks alone uh, doesn't supply the overall ecosystem as well, in my opinion. Um, small little backwater here. And like I say, they're going to get smaller. we still got some hills and stuff here. So we're still looking. These, these are kind of steep. Um, if something like this stays clear or the water's falling fast in the spring, I've seen them prefer these steeper banked uh, coves to spawn in uh, over the flat. This backwater right here, I really like. So when this thing's flooded, this thing may all be one big giant backwater. And if it is, or if it isn't, doesn't matter. This is my number four. And I'm counting all this. Uh, one, just because of the size. I mean, it's massive, guys. And uh, how flat it is. I really, really, really like this. We get some water willow growing in some of this. Woo, son. Got feeders coming in. It's got feeder coming in, feeder coming in. So it's got multiple feeders in it. Uh, good looking area. Is that number five? I believe it is. Another really good one. Number six, giant one. As far as how I would rank these, this one up here, this one right here is gonna be up there. There's, there's gonna be a lot of fish that live in this system right here, uh, this little backwater. Uh, you can come in here and fish all day long and never leave. There's a lot to offer in here. Um, feeder Creek, Cove, Cove. Looks like an actual feeder creek here that's even larger, much more like a river. Uh, this is a big creek right here. This, this thing flows a lot of water. Good population of fish potential to be involved with this with this right here. Local rain runoff. <clears throat> it's got lots of pockets and protected areas in here. Um, very good looking area. Then we we'll get into some of these smaller ones as we as we get on up the river here. Um, have we crossed the line yet? Where's the state line? Yeah, we have. So we've come across the state line, and that that, that was kind of the area of the lake that I really liked because you had big waters on both sides of the state line, backwaters, and. Uh, just really productive looking fishing. It's, uh, you know, spinnerbait, flipping, uh, river fishing. You know, if you want to know how deep it is, turn your grass off and stick your rod in the water. And if it doesn't touch the bottom, you're too deep, you know. Good looking backwaters. This is that big one we were just in. Going up around the bend. Another really good looking backwater. So these are where guys are slipping off and catching big bags of locals that know this place they know which ones of these little ones will fire and they know that the back of this little thing will wad up or you know uh, maybe they're only in this arm right here um, it, it, it'll make something like that and they'll make a little milk run up here or they'll have one little creek that loads up with fish and uh, in March or April and they're able to go in there and catch their 20 pound bag um, this is an interesting little place too. This looks very flat, but right now the water's out. But the flat's good, guys. Like I said, remember that. The flat is a good thing. Um, I like that. And don't be scared of the fact that it's flat. It's a good looking feeder creek. There's lots of these feeder creeks coming up this lake. Now the thing that I try to remember is it's like a feeder creek is great. One day tournament fishing, right? You can go in there and have a really good day. They do not hold up for multi-day events, generally speaking. Um, there's no stone that doesn't go unturned and they get in them, they find them. 
Here's another one, another little feeder creek with lots of turns. Turns are important in creeks because generally every time it makes a turn, it makes it deeper. So then you have deep holes in a creek. Um, these are things that, that we look for. So a creek like this, it's very crooked and turns a lot. It's a good one. As opposed to one that's just straight run. Another bridge. Looks like a new bridge is being installed. It's probably already been built. And you guys have a new bridge there. And then a low water dam. Um, this area for the spawn. Not such a great deal for me. But um, this is a great area. It's just, you know, an actual spawn. That's not what they're looking for. But post spawn, they're going to be there quick. Um, if the water is this low and you get this kind of flow, that's a really cool spot and a good place to get bit. I'm sure many guys have caught a fish there before. All right, so let's look at the overall picture of how far we've come. We've come way, way, way up this river. Um, the stuff that I really, really like, you don't have to go that far up, <clears throat> was this area right here, this area right here, this area right here, and then a few, or a few on the north side that looked really good, this one, this one. This one, not as much. Man, there's some good looking stuff in here. Golly. This is just a great looking area. It's giant. It's flat. There's a lot to pick from in here. Um, your fish coming right off the main river. This is, this is going to be one of them too. This thing has missing some pieces to overall year long population staying comfortable. Um, they got to go all the way out here to the main river. Because it gets pretty shallow in here in the winter. There's not much water left. But man, what a what a sanctuary in the spring. You know, this this looks like an area that they have on uh, Rayburn. You know, it's like a oh, it's like a fish hatchery. You know, that's that's what this looks like to me. You know, when you get the water high and up in the up in the bank and in the bushes and you get some water willow growing everywhere. You can see some of it hanging around out here on the outside edges of these islands. Uh, good looking stuff. So this is my style of fishing. That's why I really wanted to was looking forward to doing this part of the part of the lake. <clears throat> if I was coming here, this is this is the end that I'm gonna I'm gonna start with, um, and I'm gonna start in these big backwaters, and uh, I'm gonna pick around, and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna spend all my time in those. I feel like that you know this has the potential to have a top ten caught out of it. And this area has the potential to have a top ten caught out of it, and so the other four or five that I pointed out. If I run three or four of these, and they just nothing's working. What I'm going to fall back to on a lake like this is I'm going to come back to these areas. This is a really strong looking area. And it does offer year-round uh, habitat for a bass. And um, there's definitely going to be some fish caught out here as well. So that's pretty much my breakdown, guys. I hope you uh, like this episode of Weiss Lake. I'm sorry it took me uh, two different episodes to get one in. It's just such a big place. It's hard to break down. Just remember on rivers, I'm looking to get out of the current, I'm looking for no silt, hard bottom, place to spawn, um, lily pads, wood. If we can't have hard bottom, they'll do the trick. Um, I haven't seen many pads in this, but lots of water willow and the edges of water willow will work as well. Uh, which is, if you don't know what water willow is, it's just bank grass. It's the grass that grows on the bank. Um, swim jig and all that stuff's great and that stuff too, even in the spawn. So, guys, that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much it.